In today's video, we're checking out the HyperX Quadcast S USB RGB, take a look at all these cool lights, condenser microphone. This is a plug and play USB only microphone that has a bunch of connectivity. It'll work with a PC, a Mac, it'll work with a PlayStation 4, and many apps including TeamSpeak, Discord, Skype, open broadcaster software. So if you're a gamer, you can use this absolutely with OBS. It will also work with XSplit and many other plug and play applications. This video will hopefully cover everything you need to know about this microphone and I'll timestamp everything in the description below. And then we're also gonna test it up against the Rode NT-USB Mini and the legendary Blue Yeti, which I've had for countless amounts of years. I've tested so many microphones over the last 15 years or so. I'm going to give you my thoughts about how this weighs up against these two guys at the end. A massive thank you to HyperX Gaming for sending this microphone out for the review. Just to let you know, they're not paying me to make this video, nor do they get any input into it, but they are letting me hold on to this mic. Let's get into it. First up, let's talk a little bit about what you get in the box. You get some instructions and a warranty card. You get a three meter USB braided cable. I think this is great. It's USB-C to USB-A type. The A type goes to the computer. The C type plugs into the back of the microphone. We also get this really cool base for the microphone. It's quite heavy. It's actually quite a lot heavier than the microphone itself. So there's no chance of it slipping or falling over. One of the cool things we get in the box is this microphone mount. Now we can take the mic and the shock mount off this base and then hook it up to a boom arm. Now I have a Rode PSA1 boom arm. The microphone itself is too light to keep the mic down like this, right? So if you have one of these Rode boom arms, it doesn't work very well. It will always just float back up because you can't lock the angles off. But if you've got one like a newer or newer, however you say that, that will work fine with this because you can lock it off onto any particular angle. I'll leave links to those in the description below. Let's talk about some of the features now when it comes to the Quadcast S. So one of the big standout features obviously is this rockin' RGB setup. Now if you're a PC user, you can download a piece of software called Ingenuity. It's kind of spelt funny, I'll link it down below so you can download it, which allows you to customize the RGB lighting setup. Being that I'm on a Mac, I'm out of luck, but most gamers, PC gamers especially, will have no problems getting that onto their computer and modifying it that way. Now, this doesn't have to just be used for gaming, of course. You can use it for podcasts. I think it has a really great sound. Another one of the standout features is we get a tap to mute button right on the top. All you have to do is tap it. The lights will go out and the microphone is now muted or in its off position, which I think is really great. You're listening to my voice being captured now with a Saramonic shotgun microphone. This should give you a sense of comparison when I hit this back on just how this sounds up against a pro mic. The next feature isn't found on a lot of USB microphones. It's found on some, but not all. And this is the four different polar patterns that this microphone's capable of. You're currently listening to this microphone in cardioid mode, which means it's picking up just sound from the front in an ideal world. Now, condenser microphones tend to pick up a lot of ambient noise. That's just inherent to their design. So I'm gonna show you cardioid mode now. As I turn the microphone around, you should hear it pick up far less of my voice now as it's um, behind the microphone, but you're still gonna be able to hear it. I'll do a full keyboard test in just a moment, but that's how it sounds in cardioid mode. To switch between the polar pattern mode, simply use the dial on the back. I'm gonna click it one to the left, which brings us into omnidirectional mode. This means it's gonna pick up the sound evenly for all around the microphone. Imagine you've got three or four people in a room, you plonk this down in the center, you're gonna get a very balanced mono mix of everybody's voice. So now as I turn the microphone, it's not gonna make any difference which position it's in. It's gonna pick up my voice evenly. This is a really functional unit. The third polar pattern mode is called bi-directional. This is very functional, much like cardioid mode. It picks up sound from the front. It picks it up evenly from this side of the microphone. So imagine you've got someone facing me in this room sitting where the camera is right now. I would use bi-directional mode to get a really balanced mono signal into the computer or live stream. Now, as I turn this around, you're probably gonna hear my voice cut out a little bit. And then when I turn it all the way around, it's gonna sound fine again, right? So this is perfect for a two person interview where this is in the middle of both people. This last mode is called true stereo mode, which means it's gonna pick up a stereo signal. Say for example, you're at an event where you wanna capture you know, ambience or a band or something that's happening where you wanna get a good sense of space, stereo mode is the way to go. I'm actually talking into the side of the microphone here. This is the front over this side, this is the back and that's the side. So. As I turn this around now, you're gonna hear it switch sides in your headphones or on your speakers if you're listening in stereo. So this is perfect for doing band rehearsal stuff or anything that you wanna capture a stereo sound. Pretty cool. 
Additionally, we get a headphone output on the back of the microphone and you can use that for real time monitoring as well as playback from your computer. You can set this as an audio device and listen back that way. Now on the bottom of the microphone, we have a gain control that controls the gain of the microphone. So if you're really softly spoken, you can crank it up and talk at a softer volume. Or if you're really loud and animated, you can go ahead and bring that down. And when you do this on the bottom, it's nice and smooth and dead silent. You shouldn't hear any of that coming through the microphone. This microphone has an internal pop filter which helps get rid of the plosives, but I've noticed through my testing yesterday that you still get some plosives. So if you wanna get that big full sound up close to the microphone, my suggestion is to turn it away from your mouth slightly and get closer to it this way, but talk across the front. If you talk into the front, the plosives are there and they can be problematic. So problematic plosives. We'll see if that actually pops the microphone. I've left my headphones off because I found out yesterday that they're very noisy and they creak a lot. So I've left them off, but I tested all of this and I already know that that should have created some plosives and that now talking across the front like this should be pretty good. So this is the best way to do it. Up next, I'm gonna show you the proximity effect on this microphone by getting up close to it like this and just talking across the front so I don't get any plosives. Now, from my testing of this yesterday, it doesn't have that great of a proximity effect. It still sounds nice up close, but it doesn't really give you a much fuller and rounder sound as opposed to just being back here. So this is designed as a desk microphone or obviously on a mount as well, but I think it sounds pretty good at a distance and you have far less chance of giving it any plosives as well. So yeah, use it on the desk like this. You shouldn't have any issues. Up next, we're doing an off-axis rejection test. The microphone's in cardioid polar pattern mode, which means it's gonna reject or try to reject sound from behind it. I've got this old school keyboard on the desk. Let's give this a shot. I'm gonna talk and type and this test is designed to see how much of the keyboard will get picked up being that it's behind the microphone and out of its polar pattern range. So we'll see whether or not this works. I'm gonna stop talking for a moment. And then I'm gonna start talking again so you can hear the difference. Now, in my test of this, it still heard the keyboard without any issues and that's not uncommon for a condenser microphone. So just food for thought there, if you want something that rejects a lot of background sound, this might not be the right mic. Let's do a handling noise test. Now, being that this microphone is screwed into a shock mount, I want to just move it around like you would in the real world. So I'm gonna lift it up and plonk it down to my left. Whether or not you heard any big thumps or thuds, you can be the judge of that. I'm gonna move it back to the center. And now I'm just gonna tap the desk. And what this will do is show us whether or not the shock mount is taking the brunt of the shock, because that's what they're designed for. So odds are that's gonna pick up some of that, but. Hopefully it's not too bad. I guess I'll find out in editing. Up next, I'm gonna cover some of the specifications and what you need to know about this in the real world because reading a spec sheet is of no use to anybody. This microphone's power consumption is five volts at 125 milliamps, which means it's USB powered. So that's what that stands for. The sample and bit rate is 48 kilohertz at 16 bit. This is basically an industry standard now and it will give you nice, clear, crisp audio. Now this microphone is an electric condenser microphone. It also has three capsules built into it and that's how we get all of those different polar patterns. They're 14 millimeter capsules, which aren't the biggest in the world, but I think it works extremely well given what you've heard so far. The frequency response to this microphone is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, which means it's going to pick up all the lowest end of human hearing and all the way up to the highest frequencies. The weight of this microphone is only 254 grams and that's one of the reasons why if you take it off the base, it's not heavy enough to use with the Rode PSA-1 boom arm. It's very, very light, but the base itself and the shock mount together weighs 364. So the total with everything in this package, in case you wanna take it when you travel, is 710 grams. Up next, we're doing an audio comparison between the HyperX Quadcast S that you're listening to right now, the Rode NT-USB Mini, and the Blue Yeti. Now, the Blue Yeti has all the same polar patterns as this microphone, and the Rode does not, so I'm just gonna test them all in their regular cardioid polar pattern mode. Up next is the Rode NT-USB Mini. This thing is so small, I always wanna kinda of talk into it like this. Good posture, right, sitting there like that. So yeah, obviously this is a very small microphone, but one of its advantages is it will work on one of these boom arms. So that's interesting. It looks really small, but it does weigh quite a lot. I think the sound quality of this is fine and it still sounds okay on the desk, but it does pick up more room noise because it's not as close to my mouth. As the other two microphones, I'll switch it over to the Yeti. And now we're over to the legendary Blue Yeti microphone. So this is one of those microphones you'll either love or hate visually. One of the things I like about it Ergonomically, it's really good. You can let it sit up like this. It's very close to your mouth, which means you're gonna get a really good sound. 
much like the HyperX, they have the same polar patterns and functionality. So when it comes to choosing between either one of these two, it comes down to sound quality. Which one do you like the best or which one do you like the look of the best? I gotta say the modern look of this is really something pretty cool. This has an old sort of talk show look to it. You know, you might see it on someone like David Letterman's desk from the 90s, for example. It has that kind of vibe, whereas this is a whole lot more modern. And now we're back to the HyperX Quadcast S. Can you hear a huge difference between this and the other two microphones on camera? This looks far better in my opinion, just looking at it again on my reference monitor. It looks really cool. So yeah, let me know your thoughts on the audio quality. Thanks for watching, folks. My name's Shane. A massive thank you to HyperX for sending this out for the review. I really appreciate it. I'm going to give you my thoughts about this microphone in terms of usability and sound quality. When it comes to ergonomics, this microphone is great. Nice and tall on the desk, but also very thin. It doesn't block the view quite as much as the Blue Yeti. As great as that microphone is, this is far more streamlined. I think it really suits the vibe of this studio far more than the Blue Yeti does. The Blue Yeti is kind of a dated look, but it's also very classic. This has the modern design. I love the fact you can just mute it by tapping on the top and you can change your gain levels by using the control on the bottom. So it's got that going for it. The only thing that this seems to be missing from my point of view is the ability to adjust your headphone volume from the actual microphone. And that's the advantage of the Rode and also from the Blue Yeti. There has the gain control on the bottom which changes your voice level, but it doesn't actually allow you to change the headphone volume without using your computer to do it. It's not hard to do that, obviously. You can just set that up, but you can monitor your headphones coming back through the mic and all that kind of stuff, but you can't change the gain of the headphones or output volume from the microphone itself. So if that's a deal breaker for you, just keep that in mind. When it came to the sound quality, I thought this sounded really good. It also has a very bright sound with my voice now, which lends itself to a bit more of that sibilant sound. So if you're gonna be doing any kind of voiceover, you might just want to either talk across the front of the microphone a little bit or add a de in post, but it's not overbearing and I think it held up really well against the other microphones and it should because in the US these are around 200 US dollars, give or take. I saw some a little less and I saw some a little more. So if you want to find out about this, links will be below. Thanks again for watching. I review all kinds of audio and video gear on this channel. So if you're not subscribed, please do so. Catch you soon. See ya.